is the ultimate ultimate diet raw green vegetables sprouts seeds sea vegetables would you add or take anything away from diet and how would you get full would you be missing any nutrients on the diet yeah so no, you're not missing, but it depends on how you do it. A lot of people become vegan and they think a salad at, um, at McDonald's is enough or something like that. No. So essential fatty acids are very important. We don't make them. We have to eat them every day. How do we get them? We get them from sprouts. We get them from blue-green algae, chlorella. We get them from uh, avocado, of course, from nuts, we get them from olives. We get them from olive oil, hemp oil, chia oil, chia seeds, hemp seeds. You will not lack anything when you're on a good diet. Our sprout juice is full of protein, calcium, essential fatty acids, phytochemicals. It's full of nutrients. It's the highest nutritious diet that you can choose is the live food diet. And that's what we've been taking people through. And so, you know, we only suspect, we only expect success because we've seen it for so many years. Brian and I have been directing this for 40 years now. It's the 40, 41st year now starting. And, you know, I've been doing this for 48 years. I ran a clinic in Sweden before and I saw the results changing to a plant-based diet not even as good as this. This is, the, this is the best. You know what happens, guest tells me, they've been looking into all the diets that are out there and we have amazing Dr. Campbell, Esselstyn, and then they realize we are there and they're like, this is a whole other ball game. Now you're talking raw living foods with all the nutrients there. And sprouts, of course, is the easiest food to digest. We've just been working with a young man with ileostomy and um, who they messed up totally with medication and all. He's been fed through a tube the last two years. Seeing him now, he's eating a big salad. He's eating for the first time in two years. And he is assimilating. He's, you know, it's, um, he's, he's going to live a great life. So the body is willing to change. And, um, you know, seeing it year after year, day after day, that we are meant to be on a plant-based diet, our, our structure is for plant-based diet. So what we forced, what we forced ourselves, because we could not eat raw meat. Raw meat is so full of bacteria and parasites and everything. So when the fire came around, they started to cook meat. But, and then they thought that the bacteria and parasites were gone. No, no, no. They live in the muscle tissue. So we're getting it. How many times do they recall E. coli, salmonella, all of that? We get big time infections from animals. Eggs that now is selling like hotcakes, somehow eggs is the next thing, next best thing out there. And uh, they're full of E. coli and salmonella. So people are just eating stuff that they have no idea what that's going to do. When Ontario University in Toronto did a study about what's in a breast cancer tissue, E. coli and salmonella. It's right there. Where do you get that from? People saying, well, you get it from spinach. No, you get it. It's from fecal matter from another animal. <laughs> so that's a deal. Some people don't feel full eating raw vegetables and sprouts, what foods can they eat to get? So we have fun. We have dehydrator. Dehydrator is this um, machine that has a um, heater and a fan to control the temperature. So we can keep food alive and keep it under 115 Fahrenheit or 44, 45 Celsius. So we make crackers, I make a uh, veggie burger, I make bread, I make, I mean, our staff here, our team is amazing in our kitchen to make dehydrated stuff. We make pizzas. I mean, it's like Friday pizza. <laughs> so that fills you up. That's just an add on to your salad, but it fills you up and it feels like you're getting something that's cooked that's, that you're more familiar with. 
and we make uh, we make all kinds of dishes like Indian um, meals. We make um, Mexican meals, and they're they're raw. We can wrap things into a collard green, and we we take, for example, walnuts. We soak them overnight, then I dehydrate them. Then I can put them in a food processor with spices like Mexican or whatever I want. And then I put it into a wrap and I eat it like a wrap. People love it here. It's one of their favorites. So nuts, we don't eat a lot. If you look at nuts and seeds, they grow different. Seeds, you will soak overnight and sprout for 24 hours and they will sprout easy. Nuts, we sprout 12 to 24 hours. And the only nuts we don't use are cashew and peanuts as they have this fungus called aflatoxin, which is a carcinogen. So we stay out of that. And they, you will get gray hair before they sprout. So you soak them and then we dehydrate to keep them for a longer time. You can eat them right away after they're soaked, of course. So that fills you up, avocado, make guacamole and make wraps with that and tons of vegetable and grains that you can soak and sprout, especially millet, quinoa, the gluten-free, amaranth, teff. These are great, soak and sprout, make a salad with you know, scallions and, and um, peppers and, and whatever you like and fix it up and, and um, have that. So these things will fill you up or you make something in the dehydrate like a cracker out of that. Yes. <laughs> Some people promote water fasting. You advocate green juice fasting. Mm -hmm. Which one is healthier? How often should we do it? How often do you do it? So we do intermittent fasting when we, uh, every day, but we fast one day. And we stop eating. Um, here we do it on Wednesdays. And um, all the guests that are able to fast will fast on Wednesday. Some people have gone through a lot of treatments. They're not ready to fast, so they will eat. But usually by second and third week, a lot of people want to try fasting. And they're surprised because it's juice. So it's, uh, we have green juice. We have wheatgrass. We, and of course we're in Florida, we have a lot of coconut trees. So we pick the coconuts down, everybody get a coconut for lunch when we fast. And then we have juice again. And then of course they have teas and lemon water as the day goes by. It's a day of more rest, that it's more restful day. We're walking and if you're working out, you're not working out hard. So it should be the day that it's easier for you. And the deal is, um, that the intermittent fasting we do kind of every day because we don't eat breakfast. Uh, Brian and I, or some of our guests eat breakfast, of course, but we fast after dinner and we don't eat until lunch. So that's intermittent fasting and which, you know, has been proven being amazing. Dr. Longo has, and a lot of people have worked on that and find how beneficial and how it boosts your immune system. The fasting it stops Tuesday night for us and it's all Wednesday and, it, and we don't eat until lunch on, on Thursday. So it's more than one day, but we call it one day fast. Why it's different water fast. We do have opportunity to do water fast here too. And of course other places are doing water fast. Uh, we ha just had a guest who did a two week water fast. It's, um, it's a different deal uh, on juice fast. You know, you're outside, you're doing treatments, you're doing uh, exercise in moderation and you're socializing different and water fast, you're very peaceful. You're staying in your room and you're taken care of, of course, people see you many times during the day, but you're not really doing anything but water fast. So it's a different deal. So I ran a fasting clinic in Sweden and that was also juice fasting. And we added lots of garlic to that. So, um, you know, which is anti-parasitic and natural antibiotic, anti-cancer. So we had great results with that too. So I, I know in Europe, there was a lot of fasting clinics when I ran it. Uh, more or less, they're, they're not existing anymore. And so people 
probably do a lot on their own at home. But I think um, because of the industrialization of everything, even the poor animals got into totally, they're, they're just, they're just uh, industrial uh, um, plants. I mean, they're just uh, used as not an animal anymore. So they're, uh, you know, we, we kind of let go of all moral. You know, remember Gandhi said, the moral progress of a nation can be judged by how its animals are treated. And this is exactly, I think we can put that together. How we're treating our animals is how we're treating humans. We are kind of got totally off track and we need to be human. We need to be human to the animals. We, it's not, they're not ours to treat like we do. It's not ours to, to, to rape and, and, and treat so poorly. And, um, you know, I'm saying rape because if, for example, if you're a mother cow, you're being inseminated um, once a year, as well, as soon as you have the baby, because now as soon as the baby, baby calf is taken away from you and you are now inseminated because you, they want to get your milk. And of course, if you're pregnant, now the more milk you're gonna have. So they just became milk, milk producing cows. And like any animal, a cow, just like I would be if my baby was taken away, as soon as I gave birth, I'm, she's looking for him, her. She's looking for him or her. She's crying out to find her she, and she'll never stop. She will never stop. And so this romantic view that we have of mother calf and the calf is right beside mom and she's learning from mom and she, Dairy cows have nothing of that in their whole life, nothing. And they're usually slaughtered within three years when they could live probably 20 more years. It's, uh, it's, it's what we have created with our needs and we can change that. We are the only one that can change that. And you, you can change it with your wallet because if you don't support it anymore, you go plant-based, you are doing your share.